water tower again, weren't you? Yes. Someday, that train's gonna sneak in, drain out all the water before you can get out, and leave you high, dry, and bare. Mom, <laughs> it's hot. Where else can we swim? Don't worry about that, girls. I got plans for a big swimming pool. We're gonna put it right out here in front. A uh, swimming pool? Olympic size, Kate. And in the wintertime, we'll turn it into a skating rink. It'll give the hotel class. Uncle Joe, with business as slow as it is, we're losing money now. I know we are, but with the swimming pool and the skating rink, we can raise the rates. <laughs> Going to Hooterville, Kate? Give you a free ride. Oh, yeah, Charlie, be right there. What's the matter? You hear something? The cannonballs are wheezing this morning. Everything all right, Charlie? Yeah. She's just getting a little old like the rest of us. I wonder what kind of engines they're running on the main line now. Well, I wouldn't know, Floyd. It must be 20 years since we've seen the main line. Yeah, you reckon they'll ever put that trestle back up so we can get there? No. <laughs> Floyd, if you ask me, the folks have forgotten all about us back at the CNFW. Gentlemen, this supercharged diesel locomotive is now standard equipment on the entire CNFW system. Five short years ago, you brought me out here from the east to do a job for you. Well, gentlemen, I think you'll agree that today we have the most modern, the most progressive, the most... <laughs> what is that? Looks like a branch line. Branch line to where? For what? That doesn't even connect to the main line. I'll check into it. Well, fast. You charter a plane to this town of Hooterville and ride that branch to the end of the line. I want a complete report. Right away. <laughs> Well, uh, gentlemen, Mr. Bedlow here is flying out to Hooterville to look into a branch line. Morning, boys. Hi, Good Charlie. Morning. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. Well, it's all right. We're in no hurry. Uh -huh. Kate, should I put on my conductor suit, or is it just home folks getting on? Just home folks, Floyd. Well, in that case... Boy! <laughs> Drop us off at Drucker's Star, will you, Charlie? Fine. Come on, girls. Hey, Charlie, I'd go along, too, but I'm afraid with one more passenger, the old Hooterville meatball couldn't make the grade. That's cannonball. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. Kate's in a hurry to get to Hooterville. She is? Well, in that case, I better go tell her to get off of this thing and start walking. <laughs> Don't pay any attention to him, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Shot the station. Oh, they didn't. They'll stop down to the general store. General store? But the station's up here. Yeah, but they're letting Kate and her girls off to do their shopping. Who in the blue blazes is Kate? Runs the hotel between here and Pixley. Well, you must be from a long ways off. You ain't never heard of Kate Bradley and her girls. Hi, Mrs. Bradley. Hello, Herbie. Hi, Herbie. Hello, Herbie. Hello, Herbie. Hello, Herbie. Hello, Herbie. Hi, Herbie. Hi, Billy. <laughs> Herbie, we don't want to keep the train waiting too long. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Bradley. I've already got some of your regular order ready in the back. We figured you'd be in today. Uh, come on, girls, let's get busy. Are they just going to park there and wait while that woman does her shopping? They usually do. The boys are real fond of Kate. Well, what do the boys think they're operating? A train or a taxi? <laughs> well, a little of both, I reckon. <laughs> When I get through, it won't be either one. I'll melt that thing down for paperweights. <laughs> oh, Floyd and Charlie must be tired of waiting. Let's get the rest of the supplies out to the platform. I'll, I'll go see if Billy needs any help. Mom, can we get some new swimming suits? No, we cannot. Summer's over and put them back. Okay. I'll help you, Billy. Come on, girls. Get a move on, girls. Train's waiting.
Sorry, Kate, but them traveling salesmen we picked up are anxious to get to Pixley. Yeah. Sure sorry to rush you, Kate. Worked out fine, Charlie. Got all our shopping done. Good. All right, let's get the baggage aboard. <laughs> Don't bother about it, ladies. Old Floyd and I'll put oh, her on there for you. Can help a little. Here. When they get their supplies loaded, are they gonna back up that train for me? Wouldn't count on it. They don't even know you're here. Well, then, by thunder, you're gonna hightail it down that track and tell them. I wouldn't count on that, either. <laughs> What's your name? Sam Drucker. What's yours? Homer Bedlow. And you're fired. Uh, there's another thing I wouldn't count on. Mr. Drucker, I happen to run this railroad, and you're no longer working for it. Never did. I happen to run the general store. <laughs> what the devil are you doing here? Why aren't you down at your store? Well, I tell you. You see, Kate ain't got the money to pay for all them supplies she just bought. And it's a heap less embarrassing for her if I ain't there. <laughs> well, if this isn't the nothingest. <laughs> Looks like that'll do it, Floyd. Well, best we get rolling now. Betty Joe, would you like to take the throttle? Can I, Mom? You always do going home. Get me up a good head of steam, Charlie. I'll have to highball her to make the hotel in time for supper. Right. <laughs> take it easy on Dead Man's Curve. Come on, Billy Joe. In a minute, Mom. Bobby Joe? I'm in here, Mom. Oh. <laughs> hey! He yelled all aboard. Yeah, if you want to cash your train, you'd better start shanking it down your track. <laughs> I'll melt the whole works down for paperweights. <laughs> waits for nobody. That's what I melt him down for. Cannonball! <laughs> Talk to my daughter about the menu for my hotel. Train gets there just about supper time. She and her sisters wait table in the dining room. Sisters? You got more like her? Oh, three in the hall. Uh, Billy Joe, I think this evening we'll have fried chicken, mashed potatoes with cream gravy, corn on the cob with fresh churned butter, hot biscuits and jam, fresh apple pie with homemade ice cream, and, um, what else? Does the train stop long enough for us to eat at your hotel? Oh, I, I think it can be arranged. But, but the safe thing to do is plan to spend the night. You'll never get up to a better breakfast than at the Shady Rest. Good night, Billy Joe. Signals at. Dead man's curve. You better grab hold of something and. Whoever's high pulling that locomotive up there is either drunk or crazy. I'll thank you not to talk like that about my little girl. <laughs> Your little girl's running this locomotive? She always does on the way back from town. She and Charlie, just like this. Who's Charlie? The engineer. Look, uh, Scoot over. It's, it's hard to talk across the aisle. <laughs> you one of those reporters? In a way, yes. <laughs> well, Charlie Pratt's the best engineer that ever popped ahead of steam. And he's letting your child drive this locomotive? 
been driving it since she was knee high to a cow catcher. <laughs> so much black smoke. Lord's well, been burning railroad ties again. <laughs> oh. Charlie, take a look. All the pressure I can get is 135. Well, that'll hold you. Don't push it too hard. You know what I think? The cannonball needs a boiler wash. Yeah, I reckon she's got some mud in her belly, all right. Let's wash her out when we get to the hotel. And I can clean the grates and ash pan at the same time. Betty Joe. You're getting to an age of where the boys have got their eye on you, and it just ain't the most romantic thing in the world for the love of your life to come crawling out of a locomotive boiler. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, Billy Joe can have the boys. I'm in love with the Hooterville Cannonball. Well, that's fine for now, hon, but one of these days, you're gonna wanna be hugging something that can hug you back. <laughs> Billy Joe, you change places with your sister. Mom, I like riding backwards. I know what you like. Now do as I say. Bobby Joe, take Billy's seat. <laughs> Only one thing on her mind. Boys. Oh, Bobby, don't you ever get tired of just reading about love? Don't you ever want to do something about it? Sure. I could meet a man like Robert Browning. Well, where we live, we don't get much chance. <laughs> Unless he's a traveling salesman. Gee, I wish we lived in the city. Love can happen any place, Billy. Who knows? A Prince Charming could come walking right through that door. That's quite a load of supplies you put on, Kate. Uh, yeah, Floyd. How much are you going to charge me for freighting all that up to my hotel? I reckon that's gonna cost you two chicken dinners. That's robbery. But I guess I'll have to pay it. He's a Floyd a cop. He sure is. What's his last name? Smooth. Floyd Smooth. He and Charlie been on this line for years. They say they'll never stop running this old train. Well, I wouldn't bet on that. All right, folks, get your fares ready. Oh, um, how much for me and my three daughters, Mr. Conductor? Well, let's see. All over 12? Mm, yeah, including me. <laughs> uh, that's going to cost you two fresh baked apple pies. Like rice. Well, the railroad's got to make a profit. <laughs> Say, if you want fresh apple pie, you better get up to the locomotive and tell Betty Joe to stop the train at Ben Miller's Orchard. Right, Gar, Kate. Did I hear right you're going to stop this train to pick apples? Well, I kind of think we have to. The tree's set a quarter mile from the track. <laughs> this isn't a train, it's a rolling booby hatch. <laughs> I was just looking out the window there. Oh, I sure love this country. Everything's so green. Oh, not as green as you think. <laughs> well, I... Th thanks for the apple. Put your feet down. Sit up like a lady. Well, oh, we're almost there. Almost where? My hotel, the Shady Rest. I don't see any hotel. Sets up above the tracks on a little rise. Folks, there'll be a two to three hour layover here whilst we go up to Kate's hotel for supper. What do you mean, two or three hour layover? According to this timetable, this train's not supposed to stop here at all. 
Is that a fact? <laughs> hey, Charlie, come on in and take a look. Feller in here has got a timetable. <laughs> we ain't seen one of these in 20 years. <laughs> Anybody want to help me and my daughters tote the supplies? Why, just come right this way. Oh, hold it, hold it. This train's supposed to go to the end of the line, Pixley. As a matter of fact, we're due there already. So am I. So let's get rolling. What seems to be the trouble here, Floyd? Fella here wants to go on to the end of the line right away. It says it's a schedule. Is that a fact? What do you think we ought to do? Well, I reckon the fair thing to do is to put it to a vote. A vote? <laughs> Good idea. All those in favor of going up to Kate's cool, comfortable, shady rest hotel for some delicious fried chicken and apple pie served by her three beautiful daughters, hold up your right hand. Come in. Sure. Here's to me your outvote. <laughs> Uncle Joe found his Indian. Hide it again, girl. <laughs> hey, this is quite a place. You even got an elevator, huh? Oh, it doesn't run. Uncle Joe bought it. He said it gives the hotel class. <laughs> oh, yeah? Honey, I'm gonna tell you what gives this hotel some class. <laughs> Step back! <laughs> Go on up! Go on up! <laughs> it's Uncle Joe's minor bird. Oh. We use this for a cage. <laughs> yeah. Now then. Going up, second floor. On the way, my daughter gets off in the kitchen. <laughs> Charlie, Floyd, show the gentleman where to wash up for supper. Sure, I'll show you, feller. <laughs> hey. Huh? <laughs> this place got a telephone. Hey, you bet you did. Someone telephone between Hooterville and Pixley. I was the one that got it and put it in. Never mind that. Where is it? Oh, uh, say, mister, I'd like to tell you a story about that telephone. <laughs> I was out Just by... tell me where it is. <laughs> I go through that door here. It's on your wall to the right. Hello, operator. Operator, operator! What you trying to do, mister? What's it look like I'm trying to do? I'm trying to get the operator. You ain't gonna get her on that phone. Why not? It ain't connected. <laughs> what do you mean? Ain't no telephone wires connected, too. <laughs> What's it doing here, then? Gives a hotel class. That's the only telephone between Hooterville and Pixley. Why didn't you tell me that outside? Well, I did start, and you, you cut me off. Never mind now. Where can I wash my hands? Oh. Second floor. Going up, all aboard. Oh, good. <laughs> Step back. Step back in the car. <laughs> what you doing in there, mister? I'm going up to the second floor. Not on that elevator, you ain't. What do you mean? Ain't connected. <laughs> oh, my aching ulcer. Going up, going up. She's a minor bird. The only minor bird between Hooterville and Pixley. Answer me a question. What have we got an elevator for that doesn't run? Oh, gives a hotel class. <laughs> That's the only elevator. Oh, shut up! <laughs> uh, don't worry about the washroom. It's connected. <laughs> hey. Uh, somebody hid my Indian again. <laughs> was the best meal I'd ever stoked a man's boiler. <laughs> really delicious. I always did say if this hotel was in town, can't it be turning the people away? Who built it way out here in the middle of nowhere? Her muley grandpa, that's who. Stubbornest man that ever lived, wasn't he, Kate? Well, the way it happened, he was planning to build down the track at Pixley, but the flat cars that were hauling his lumber tipped over when they hit the curb out in front. 
So Grandpa just went ahead and built the hotel right here. <laughs> well, let's all go ahead and do some oh, things. Yeah. Sing it. Uh, We're four hours late for Pixley now. We always sing after supper, Mr. Bedlow. Nothing better for settling your food. I'm going to go to Pixley, and you're going to take me now. I don't think these folks want to leave yet. Well, it wouldn't pay to make the run with just one passenger. <laughs> no, they say the railroad's losing money now. <laughs> How could that be? Well, the answer's simple. Those folks up at the main office, they just don't know anything about running a railroad. That's a fact. Now let's all go in and do some singing. Right. Now you just hear this. For your information, I'm one of the fellows at the main office. As a matter of fact, I'm one of the main fellows at the main office. And I've got news for you. The train from Pixley to Hooterville is no longer in operation. It's scrapped, junked, and everybody connected with it is discharged, fired. Now go and sing on that. If you scrap the train, it'll ruin this hotel. That's your problem. Well, you know no good. Now, Uncle Joe, angry words never settled any problem. Let's just, let's just all go in and decide what we're going to do. Those in favor, raise your hands. Well, have you decided what you're going to do? Yes, we have, Mr. Bedlow. We put it to a vote. Again with that vote? <laughs> That's the democratic way, ain't it? <laughs> well, what'd you vote? Everybody voted to spend the night here and settle the problem of the train tomorrow. Can't you get it through your heads that that train hasn't got any tomorrow? It's through, finished. Now, I'm going to Pixley. How? You fired Floyd and Charlie. Listen, if your little daughter can run that train, I can run it. What's the matter? Why won't you run? <laughs> Maybe you haven't got enough pressure. Try the whistle. <laughs> Bedlow, you've been working now for three hours. Why don't you come on up, take a nice hot bath, and go to bed? No. This is my train, and I say it'll run. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> my hands full of splinters from that stupid wood, and I smashed my finger on that stupid firebox door, and now I've busted my stupid foot. <laughs> you know what I think? What? I think I ought to go back to the hotel, have a hot bath, and go to bed. <laughs> and we'll settle the problem of the train tomorrow. That's a good idea. Tomorrow. Help him down, boys. Oh, how do you two fellas run this crazy thing? <laughs> I've been railroading for 32 years, but I couldn't get a pound of pressure. <laughs> Don't you worry, old girl. We've been through a lot together, and we'll get through this, too. 